Hello, good afternoon to all of you out there. I want to welcome you to our hydro station building a water pipeline challenge. I'm so excited that you're all joining us. I know we have lots of friends out there from the Chula Vista Elementary School District and beyond. So welcome, welcome. I'm so excited to be sharing this experience and challenge with you today. Um, this live event couldn't be possible without some of our partners out there so i just want to give a quick shout out to our friends at sweetwater authority and otai water district two companies who always bring you safe reliable drinking water into our communities now with that my name is mrs bystrag and i am a teacher at a place called the hydro station the hydro station is a classroom experience where students get to come and learn all about water and potential careers as they learn about water as well. Now, before we get started, I just want to let you know there's so many different ways that you're going to be able to participate and share today. Today, through our journey and experience together, we're going to be going through the engineering design process as we build our water pipeline or water distribution system, as we call it. We also have opportunities for you to ask questions or give responses or share comments in our Q&A section. And I have a couple friends out there moderating. I have Mrs. Quiroz, I have Mr. Garcia and Mr. Bruder all out there willing to um, facilitate and moderate and take those questions and comments for you. And be sure to stick around for the very end after we do our demonstration and we build our pipeline together. Please join us, test your knowledge from what you learned today in our live Kahoot. Now, this is a hydro station experience, so I always love to start off asking students and people out there, I want you to think about water and I want you to think about how did you use water this morning? How did you use it? I know when I woke up, I took a shower to wake up. I know I took a couple sips of water to wake up my organs and make me feel good in the morning. I know that when I went to brush my teeth, I turned on the faucet and I was able to brush my teeth. So I used water in lots of ways. I even got water to feed the dog or give water to the dog as well. So I bet there's some similar ways that you used water this morning. Now, when you turned on that faucet, it feels like that water magically appears. You turn it on and boom, there it is. It's magic, right? Well, not exactly. So to get water to our homes, there is a major process, a major system of pumps and pipes and all kinds of equipment and employees and people who help get that water to where it needs to go, which is your homes, your businesses and your communities. So if we take a quick look here, let's take a quick look and follow this maze to figure out that flow of water. Now water can start at a source as we see here in a lake or river or reservoir as we see in number one. We can treat that water at a water treatment plant, send it over to be stored in tanks, which can then send that water to some major distribution lines in our community. From those distribution lines, we can send that water out to our service areas, which is to you, our customers, out to our homes and businesses who need that water. After that water leaves your home, it goes back to another treatment plant to be processed so that it can go back in, into our environment and we can start that process all over again. But who makes these plans? Who comes up with all these ideas? Who makes this system work? Well, that's a good question because that is the answer to that is it is the role or the job of civil engineers to be able to come up with these plans for our cities and communities. And today you are going to take on that role of a civil engineer. Now, what do these civil engineers do? These civil engineers design, build, and construct projects or systems that include things like our roads, our buildings, our tunnels. I have highlighted here our dams that have to do with water and bridges. And finally, they help with those systems such as water and sewage systems. So we are going to take on that role of becoming civil engineers today. Now, no matter what kind of engineer you are, you always go through a design process. 
So engineers go through what we call the engineering design process. There's got to be some kind of need or problem in the community or some kind of need or problem. And engineers come up with a solution that becomes their challenge. So to begin, they start by wondering, asking questions. Then they began to imagine some big ideas. They also take some time to plan out their ideas and then they create them, whether it's either a model, a prototype, and then from there they're able to test and improve those models and then pretty much start that cycle again. Now today I want to present a challenge to you or a problem since you're all becoming civil engineers. And that problem is something that our water companies or water authorities face every day. Customers want clean, reliable water delivered to their homes. As we mentioned, there's so many reasons and ways that we use water. If you take a look at this little house, people are flushing the toilet, they're cleaning, they're using the kitchen, they're running laundry, they're watering the lawn, all kinds of reasons, and they want that water delivered to their homes. So the solution is to build a model or of a water distribution system. So this is our challenge today. We want to get one source of water from one water from one source, figure out a distribution system or a pipeline and get it to our other source, meaning the home. So here we see our problem and our challenge. So naturally, as I start to know that I'm going to embark on a challenge, I start to wonder and ask questions. And if I go back to this slide and I see design and build a water distribution system, I'm starting to wonder, what is that? That's such a mouthful of words. What is a water distribution system? So a water distribution system is any combination of these pipes and tanks and pumps that deliver water from the source to the customer. So just like we followed this uh, maze and path to the end, we are taking water from one source and getting it to another. Another word we can use is a pipeline. Now I want to know from some of you out there, I just started to wonder and ask some questions. So I want you to go ahead and if you are wondering about something or I'd love to have you go to your Q&A, type in some of those questions. I want to know what are you wondering about? Before we go on this challenge together, what do you want to know? Some of the things I want to know are how will we build a model of a distribution system? How are we going to do this? What kind of materials are we going to use? So again, I would love to hear all your questions, all your wonderings. Please take the time now and write those into our Q&A or our question and answer where Mr. Garcia and Mrs. Quiros are waiting to be able to read about some of those wonderings you might have. Now, since we're starting to wonder and ask some questions, that brings us to the next stage in our engineering design process. That brings us to the imagine stage. Now, when I think about imagine, I think about the things I've seen in the past or the things I know about. So since I can't just teleport my mind or give you psychic abilities to understand what's in my mind, I'm showing two images here of some things that I've seen in different communities that I know is getting water from one source to another. So I'm using some of my background knowledge, things I've seen to start to imagine some potential ideas that I might want to use to um, build my model today. But there's one concept here. When I look back, let me go ahead and go back to that screen. Now I see here, what I, this is something I see very similar in Chula Vista. When I look around and drive around, I see water tanks or storage, water storage tanks up elevated on a hill. And I've also been in very flat areas like farmlands, like in Indiana and different places where I've seen these big water tanks. And I'm always wondering why, why does that water need to be um, up and elevated? Why is, is it up there? Why do they have that big tower or why are storage tanks on a lot of our hills in Chula Vista? And that's where I'm thinking here after the water treatment plant, 
there is that water tank that I'm wondering about in step three. Now to give us some background information, because civil engineers need to know some science behind their work. So we have scientists or physicists who have figured out all kinds of calculations. We want to understand that work so in our designs we can incorporate that science to come up with some great solutions. So I want to share this quick video with you to give you an understanding of why we might have those storage tanks up on hills or in a water tower. Water towers are important to the workings of a water system because they help to create the pressure that ultimately gets the water to your house. Water towers can hold as little as 100,000 gallons of water or several million gallons and can stand hundreds of feet tall. The height of the tower is important because the higher the tower stands, the more water pressure is created. But why is that pressure so important anyway? Well, you see, when you turn on your faucet in the morning to brush your teeth, water is pulled from the top of the particular elevated storage tank that serves your neighborhood. The water typically leaves the tank through a large distribution line that travels for many miles under streets until finally arriving at your home. Now, if the water isn't pressurized, it will have a difficult time reaching your home in the first place. And if it doesn't have enough pressure, you may not have enough water to even brush your teeth. While the main purpose of Oops, sorry about that. That was a quick video showing you the purpose of an elevated water storage structure. But there's one major reason why we need to elevate that water. So I'm wondering, why do we need to do it? And when I watched that video, I was reminded that that elevated water tank helps pressurize the water in the distribution system. Nobody wants to go to the faucet or be taking a shower and then there's just a slow little trickle. Right? We want to make sure there's enough pressure to get that water from its first source all the way to those homes and locations that are further away. Now, Mr. Bruder, before we start to imagine and think of some different ideas, I know earlier I asked students to start to ask some questions here. I know I wanted them thinking and generating some questions so that we can come up with a solution to that challenge of getting water from one source to another. So Mr. Bruder, I'm wondering what kind of questions are students asking out there before we get started with our plan? Hey, Mrs. Bystrack, as always, we have some great questions from our attendees. And you know what? There's some that are, have to do with the project we're about to do, but there's some that I think we have some future water professionals here about the way the questions are asked. So I'll, I'll go ahead and share a few if that's okay with you. Yes, please do. Hopefully they're okay, not perfect. too professional for me. <laughs> perfect. So uh, one of them, Josiah, was asking, about the benefits of filtered water and unfiltered water. And then I think, you, I actually, I know that you can share a little bit about the, what happens to the water that we get out of our faucet. Okay, so definitely. So there could be some different benefits. So what I know about um, water treatment process is that when we're taking water from one source, you can't just go to a lake or river. There could be bacteria. There could be different things or microscopic type things in that water. So it does need to go through a treatment process. So um, at the hydro station, which is located on a desalination facility, one of the ways that they treat that water is to use reverse osmosis. So they use this filter that can make um, extract a lot of those different materials so that they can have some pure water. But we do need to add back some different minerals um, for your health benefits. Add back some of those minerals into the water to make sure it's safe for you as well. It's also disinfected. So to make sure there's no viruses or bacteria when it gets to your home. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of stuff that, that is done to help us uh, as the people receiving the water. Another question uh, comes from Kylie. Kind of on the other end of the water, where does the where does the water lead to as far as when it drains? So when it drains, as I showed, and I'll probably show it in a little bit again, we do after that water goes into our sewage type um, systems, it does need to go and get treated because think about those things you put down your sink. You 
might put down, you know, if you flush your toilet, there's toilet paper. So there's lots of different things. So we need to treat that water before it either goes back out either into our ocean or to some of our water sources as well. So we treat it to try to remove those things so they're not harmful for the environment as well. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that. And then the other questions, if I could share with you, I think are specific to our projects. Uh, Lorelai was wondering how big will the project be? Well, Lorelai, that depends on you. So today we're going to do a little bit of building, um, but I'm going to leave you with a question at the end, and that's really going to depend on you and your motivation and where you want your water distribution system to go. My daughters were talking about trying to figure out a system where they could get water and a pipeline going all the way down to the dog bowl, which they were going to put in another room. So it's really up to you as that civil engineer, how big you want your design and creation to be today. And I'm, I'm glad you shared that, Mrs. Backstrap, because the last question I was hoping to share with you is from Isla, and she's wondering, how will we support the model of the pipeline? How will we support that? Well, that leads us into our next step here. So we're going to start to imagine some things. As you see on your screen here, we had a hill or we had that tower elevated. So, you know, in working with students around Chula Vista, they are so innovative that I actually got an idea from them that I'm going to share with you in just a few minutes here. So we'll see if you can figure out that innov innovative idea to figure out how we can support that water tank. So with that, Mr. Bruder, was that our last question before we move on into our Imagine stage? Yeah, I think we're ready to go. Okay, I'm ready to. I'm ready to build and show you actually a demonstration here coming up. So I already showed you some of those things that I had background knowledge of or stuff I've seen in um, different parts of our town that I know are part of that water distribution system or those water pipelines. Now I want to think, what are some ways to get water from one source to another? So what engineers do is they make sure that they start to come up with sketches or they might use computer aided design to figure out some different ways and get their ideas from their brain onto paper or on computer so they can share those ideas with other people. So my first thought here is I'm thinking about some household items that I have in my kitchen, thinking what I can use in my model as something that can hold water. And I thought about cups because usually I drink water from some sort of cup. So my first idea here is to go ahead and use the cup and since I have some straws in my kitchen, I have paper straws in my kitchen, so I could save those turtles. I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can connect that straw to be a, like a, a represent a pipe and connect it to another cup. Oh, excuse me. So, but what I just thought about right now is we just learned about that pressurized system. So we just learned that we need to be able to elevate one of those sources to get that water to the other source. So here's that fancy idea that we were just asking about. How are we going to support that water tank or that first source? Today we're going to stack or I'm going to stack and hopefully you can learn from this as well. I'm going to stack one cup on top of another so that one source is at a higher elevation than where it needs to go. So I took one idea, then I thought about that science behind it, and I modified my idea before I begin to build it. Now I want to show you a quick demonstration. We were able to learn about those elevated water tanks, but I want to show you, this is kind of, I, I feel like this is magical, something that I can show you with water. I want to show you a little bit about pressure because when I put those the straw to connect the two cups, I want to know where can I get the most pressure um, to be able to flow from one source to another. So to demonstrate that today, let me go ahead and grab my water. I want you to take a close look. I'm going to pour some water in this cup. And in this cup, I have three tiny holes all spread out. I have one hole at the top, one in the middle, and one at the bottom. And I want you to pay attention and see, let's see what happens and pay attention to the angle and the flow of the water as it squirts out. Now, as the water is starting to go, I notice my top one is getting lighter, less pressure, 
My second one's about medium. And my third, look at that water pressure flowing out. So based on this type of science or this type of observation, I know that the most pressure or the highest pressure is going to come from the bottom. So to be able to create high pressure, I want to make sure I have my hole in my model towards the bottom so that when I am um, moving water from one source to another, there's enough pressure to get it to that second source. Now, if you look back on the screen here, here's a little diagram or design just reiterating what you just saw. That very top one had lower pressure. The second one was about medium. You see that angle curving out. And then that third one was shooting out in a little further distance because it had more pressure to it. Now, why did I just mention that? I mentioned that because now I'm going to go back to my imagine, go back to my draft here and say, instead of connecting my straw at the very top, now I want to make sure that I know from my source that I want to connect it towards the bottom. So I love how I get to use that science to back up my engineering project or to give me and inform me for my project. Now with that, now that we've imagined a solution, we are going to plan and planning involves thinking about how can I label my sketch to explain my idea? And this is where we get to think about what materials can I use? Now I already had an idea, so you can see some of those right here. And we're really thinking about how will this solve the problem? How are we going to get water from one source to another? And it looks like today we're building a pipeline. So with that, my friends, it is actually time to create. We have a plan in place. You might have another plan, so it's up to you. I have a plan. You might have a plan, but you can follow along with me as you'd like. Now, before we get started, there's a couple materials I want to make sure you have. The first thing is I'm going to focus in on that center material. Make sure you lay down some sort of towel or paper towel. It's kind of like the, the splash zone at SeaWorld. I had a couple spills here today, so we want to make sure you have a towel or something to clean up if, as you're testing that water gets a little bit messy. Now, you might need some disposable cups. Today, I'm going to start off with two, but if you have more, that would be great. You need disposable cups because you're going to need to make holes in them. So scissors are a great thing to have to be able to puncture holes in those cups. We have straws. I have paper straws. I wonder if you don't have straws, is there a way you can roll paper and create pipelines as well? And then some sort of sticky item like tape in case we need to be able to make sure that there's um, those holes that we're going to create are nice and tight. So I'm going to use duct tape to make those holes nice and tight. Now, if you have glue, that might work as well. It just might take some time to dry. And finally, you're going to need that water for testing. Now, if you don't have those materials and you want to go grab them, feel free to pause and then you can catch up and you can unpause and then build with the rest of us. Otherwise, I am ready to get started to build our pipeline. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and switch cameras here. Let me go ahead and move my demonstration board out of the way. I know many of you are getting those materials right now. I am grabbing mine here as well. I'm just going to go ahead and lay them out for you. There's that duct tape. Here's some straws, which I actually cut them to create some different layers. Now I'm going to change my camera here. I'm going to see if I can refocus. It looks like it's a little blurry and I want to give you a better aspect. There we go. That looks a little bit better. Great. Now I have some extra straws in case I need to add to my design. I'm just going to set those to the side. I have my scissors, which I'm going to make sure I am very careful with today. I have a marker because I want to mark my cup with source A and B just for demonstration purposes. So you don't need that marker. I am just using that. And then, of course, I have my water source cups here or my water storage tanks. 
All right, so I am going to go ahead. Let me take these out and let me demonstrate how we are going to do. Now I need to think back to my imagine plan, thinking of what I did. And remember, I wanted to go ahead and put that because I know most pressure is going to come from the bottom of the cup. I'm going to put my hole towards the bottom. Now let me go ahead and mark these cups first. So if I'm demonstrating, I can talk about source A or source B. So we're going to count source A as our source that's going from maybe the treatment plant or that storage tank to B to a home or location. Now also, I'm going to go ahead and just make a little marking where I am going to put those puncture holes. Now, to puncture these cups, I want you to be very, very careful. Remember, you should have a towel down for when we use water, but I also want you to be careful with those scissors. So if you need help from an adult or older sibling, ask them for help because we're gonna try to pierce through these cups without hurting ourselves. So I'm gonna go ahead and push and try to just gently see if I can pierce a hole into this cup. Now, if that's not working too well, maybe you have a push pin or something, something that might be able to get through that cup. And it looks like I was able to just go ahead and push through. So be very careful with your fingers on the other side. Keep them away from those scissors. And what I like to do is I like to just kind of turn those scissors to kind of make a hole that's going to be big enough for that straw to be inserted. Now let me go ahead and do that with my second one. I'll show you a different technique this time. This time I'm going to kind of squeeze my cup and see if I can make a little pinch. I was able to make just a little line so that it was easier to pierce through. And I'm just going to take my scissors and maybe turn them a little so I have a nice circle where I can insert that straw. All right, now I have my source A, I have my source B. They need to be connected in some way with our pipeline. So here, I'm, I actually cut this just so that we can see everything on the screen together. So I cut it nice and short. You can keep yours long. You, if you want to, can make a really long pipeline and see if you attach two straws, three straws, that's up to you, depending on your space. So you can attach them maybe with duct tape if you'd like to. Now I'm gonna go ahead and stick this straw into my A, source A. Let me see if I can do that. And before I stick it into source B, I'm gonna go ahead and grab some tape or grab my glue. And I wanna make sure because that hole is a little larger than that um, pipe. And nobody enjoys a leaky pipe where we're wasting water and it's flowing out in different directions. So let me go ahead and see if I can seal up some of those spots by adding that tape and securing my pipeline. Here we go. Let's see if I can stick my hand inside the cup and push down. I'm hoping that's nice and sealed. And I push it down. Looks like it's pretty secure in there. We'll know when we test it if that's pretty secure. Now I'm going to do the same thing with B. So I'm going to go ahead and insert that straw and just push it right in there. There we go. Again, I'm going to grab some tape and secure and seal that pipe. Nobody, like we said, likes to waste water. We know it's a precious resource that we all enjoy and use every day. So let me go ahead and turn this around. I'm gonna try to seal up all around it. Wonder how you guys are doing out there. Hopefully you're able to follow step by step. I wonder if some of you did your pipeline two straws long or maybe three straws long. I wonder how long some of those pipelines can go before they need some other water tank in there. All right, so let's see if this is pretty secure. I feel like this one here, ooh, I feel like water is gonna come pouring out of that one. So I'm gonna fix that one a little bit better. It was kind of a big hole. So try to do your best. If you see like you might see some air there, I'm gonna look on the inside. All right, I think I have it pretty sealed in there. All right, so I'm going to go ahead. Now I have what I did in my drawing. I have one cup connected to another. 
Now, before I add that elevation, I want to be able to test this out. So I want to make sure that I'm going to get water from one source to another. So I am going to go ahead. Let me bring back. Let me bring this back here so I can elevate this. And I'm going to test out. I know it's a little tricky to see both of them right now. But if we go ahead and focus in our front camera right now, as I pour water into one source, let's see what happens to the other source. And sorry about that. I had to grab that towel because I am not too sure that I secured or took all of those leaks out of my pipeline. So let me go ahead. Let's see if we can demonstrate pouring some water, getting our source water from source A to source B. Mrs. Bystrack, would it be possible to lift that up a little bit more so we could see the bottom sure. part of it? Sure, sure. Let me go ahead and lift it. So I see a little leakage coming out. Is that better, Mr. Bruder? That's so perfect. I, Thank there you. There are some parts I need to secure and go back and improve already. I already know I need to do that. But what I want you to notice is that notice that at some point this water, I have to put it down just because it's leaking a little. At some point, this water balances out. So if I'm losing water in one, the other one's gonna try to balance it out. Now, eventually that water will stop flowing from one to the next. Unfortunately, I still have some leaks to fix. So let me bring my bucket over here so I can empty out this water. And we're gonna try elevating that tank so that we can see, instead of our water stopping and stabilizing like it is, we want to see more go from source A to source B. Let's test that science and see if elevating it would get more water to source B. All right, give me a second here as I pour out some of this water. Let's see if I can do it little by little. Now, like me, you might need to go back and add some tape to make sure that your to make sure that they're nice and sealed. Because like I said, nobody wants a water leak, right? Nobody wants to have extra water flowing when it's not being used for a good purpose. All right, so one thing I could do, remember I said I was gonna elevate that tank. So I'm gonna take my second cup and in my diagram, remember I stuck it under because I learned this from the brilliant kids in Chula Vista that we can use that as a cool part in our model. And I'm going to go ahead and tape these two cups together. Now, since I have my tape, I'm also going to try to reinforce some of those leaks that I had in my pipeline. So I bet you're trying to do that as well. So here are my cups. I have one that's going to be at a higher elevation than the other. And like I said, let me see if I can go ahead. Let me try to focus that one more time. I know it keeps going in and out. Let me see if it will balance for you so it doesn't bother your eyes. All right, let me try one more time. I know it was coming out on both of them, so let me see if I can reseal around it. Let me do that for my second one as well. Oh no, for some reason, let me try to autofocus this again. Let's keep it locked. Okay, perfect. Oh, it doesn't want to stay for me. Here we go. I'm gonna try one more time so it doesn't blur for you. I know you're working hard sealing your different pipelines, getting that second tower or second story so one is elevated. I'm gonna go ahead and add this tape around the edge now, I'm not sure how that's going to work, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to test this one out now before we see if I need to make any improvements, which this one was a little trickier than the last time. So I'm going to go ahead and pour that water. I'm going to add some water here. I need to go to a new source. I'm going to go ahead and pour it in and let's see what happens with that pressure. If we can get more water to source B using that pressure. Mr. Bruder, after I pour this, I can lift it up so we can see that water flowing. 
give our friends out there a better view. Looks like one of mine is still leaking, so it needs a little improvement there. But check out, source B is starting to get more water than source A because there is more pressure now that it's elevated. Now that source A is elevated, more pressure is getting into source B. So I wonder how our friends are doing out there right now. I just created the beginnings of a distribution system or a pipeline. And I bet there's so many things. If you have more materials, I bet there's so many things you can add on to your designs as well. So with that, now that you've been able to build a pipeline, I want to ask you, what would you do to improve your design? What are some things that you would do? And I'd love to hear your answers in our Q&A. I also want to know, what would you do or what do you think you might need to do if you wanted to transport your water to more than one source? So maybe you have a source C or D, kind of like you see in the picture there. So as you think about that and write that in the chat, I'm going to go ahead and take out my test water here so I don't have any crazy spills around my computer. Let me go ahead and set those to the side as you're thinking about those improvements. I mentioned my daughters were talking about building a whole pipeline so that they didn't have to give the dog water. It could automatically come to the faucet across the kitchen towards the living room and they can just deliver her water to her each day without having to do the work. So I like their innovative challenge. Now that brings us to that final step in our engineering design process, which is improving. What I'm asking, I want to know what you want to do with that. So remember today, we went through the engineering design process. We worked as civil engineers. We were presented with the problem. We needed to come up with a solution. So we asked questions. We imagined some potential ideas. We learned about some of the science behind it. We used materials and came up with a plan. And then we built our water distribution system or our pipeline. Now that brings us to that last step where I'm wondering, how you might improve your design. So with that, Mr. Bruder, as I'm cleaning up here and getting some of this wet testing uh, pipeline out of the way, I want to know if there's any questions out there or thinking about, I'd love hearing student ideas, how they would improve their designs. Do we have any improvements out there so far? Yeah, we have a couple great ones to share, Mrs. Bystrack. They're taking what you did to the next level. I love it. We have a a, a couple people are kind of saying some things along the same same lines, such as Eric, where they're saying that you could add multiple straws coming out of source A so that they can fill it up in different places. Ah, very nice. So we can fill it up in different places spreading it out, spreading that water. That's kind of explaining um, early in that one of those pictures I showed that main distribution line. So it might go to a few of those in different areas and then break out into that service area into those smaller water pipelines to make it to homes as well. Yeah, that's a lot of what they've been sharing is talking about multiple straws and multiple cups coming off of source A. So that, again, great ideas. Another uh, one from the second graders out at Olympic View is they were saying that they could possibly use modeling clay to seal the straws rather than duct tape. Ah, yes, modeling clay, bubble gum, I don't know, something sticky. What is that brain putty people use? Any of those could be some different options as well. Now, awesome. Mr. Thanks. Reuter, can I pause and hold on the questions for just a minute or improvements? I know students are still adding them, but before we talk about them, can I get them started and logged in on Kahoot? And then we can talk about more of those improvements as they come our way. Yeah, that's great. If you could throw that up on the screen. All guys. right, perfect. So I for almost forgot that I want to test your knowledge. I want to know about what you learned today. So what I want to ask you to do, actually, I'm going to stop sharing a screen here so that we can go back. I want you to be able to log into Kahoot for a quick quiz. 
Now, when you log into Kahoot, you're going to want to go into a separate window, not a different tab, a separate window, or hopefully you have a different device like a phone or iPad you can log into. Now, you want to be able to see my screen and your Kahoot screen at the same time, so you can either have two windows open on your computer or a separate device. Now, our game pin for our Kahoot is number 3078599. Now I'll leave that up for a moment. Again, our PIN number is 3078599. Now I'm going to switch screens to get into that Kahoot. I know Ms. Kiros is going to put that PIN in the Q&A. And then Mr. Bruder and I can go back and finish hearing about some of those improvements that our friends might be making. Starting to see students logging in to our Kahoot. Make yes, sure as, as, see some of these fun names. As, as our friends log in, a, a couple more things to share. You know what I have to appreciate about these responses? is they really are focused upon the, li the lines of efficiency. The these comments, they really want to make sure they're not wasting any water. And for example, Lily shared how she wants to seal some of the lines so that she can make sure that the water gets into the cups without leaking. Ah, so using some kind of sealant. So like I use tape, but we have lots of ways. And you've probably seen in faucets where things screw and then there's different pieces of rubber or materials that we can use to make sure it's nice and sealed so that water doesn't go flying everywhere like a sprinkler system, right? Yeah, and I know that's some of the challenges that, that uh, you talk about down at the hydro station as well as uh, some of the things that are... are our partners talk about as well as far as transporting water from one place to the next. Yeah, so one of the problems that students work on at the hydro station is they find out how when we're when the water companies, um, in particular Sweetwater Authority, is releasing water from one reservoir to another to add to the water supply, there's some loss of water and so water can evaporate but it can also um, seep into the ground. And so I think it's something like 25% of that water that's coming from one reservoir to another, from one source to another, is losing, I think it's as far up as about 25% of that water. So they try to figure out ways, engineer different ways to not lose that water to evaporation or water seeping into the ground. Well, I'll tell you this much, Mrs. Bystrack. I think our friends at Sweetwater Authority and Otai Water District are going to have some professionals coming from Chula Vista Elementary School District pretty soon here because they are coming up with such great ways to innovate and, and build these. Definitely. Earlier this week, I was working with students and they were coming up with some different ways to build water towers. So I'm hoping that a lot of them logged in today so they could take that water tower structure and now they can add their pipelines and distribution system to move that water from one source to the next. So I promised them that in this class today they would be taking it to a new level. But it's amazing work that students are doing. They're create, super creative. I just love watching their innovation and brains thinking as they're problem solving especially taking it step by step, being really analytical through that engineering design process. That's one of the strengths a lot of our students have that we work with. Yeah, there's so much great science and engineering to learn about within water and seeing all these great solutions that our students come up with to the problem. So I think we're just waiting for a few more of our friends to join us in the Kahoot. And remember, for those of us joining in the Kahoot, if you're joining a little late, you can still jump right in with the questions. Great, so Mr. Bruder, did you want me to wait a couple more seconds here or you think we're ready to go ahead? It looks like I still see some names coming. Did you want me to go ahead and start? I think we're just about ready. Maybe we can give our friends about 30 more seconds to log in. Sounds great, sounds great. So I know when we talk about alternate materials or taking the idea that we just did in this engineering design process, one of the things I told you is that I got an idea from my students of just stacking the cup to get that elevated water tower or water structure. I've been seeing such amazing ideas where students are using Legos in their distribution systems. I've been seeing where they're using um, just 
items around their rooms, whether it's books. I even saw someone um, make sure that there was no leakage or things spewing out by using a sweatshirt. So there's so many different creative things. If you just look around your house and you want to add to the design that we started out, I would just encourage you to do that. Have fun with it. Just be sure that you're not getting anything wet, making sure you're you have adult supervision or permission to be able to play with some of this water indoors. All right, I think we're good to go with our Kahoot game. All right, sounds good. Let's go ahead and get this started. So this is our Kahoot about water distribution systems for today. Now, my first question for you is finding out which of the following is not part of a water distribution system? So which one is not part of a distribution system? Is it the pipes? Is it tanks? Is it a dryer or pumps? So let's see, which one is not part of the water distribution system? Is it red triangle pipes? Is it yellow circle tanks? Is it blue diamond dryer or green square pumps? I'm seeing those answers flowing in. Students are looking at those images, thinking about what they know. Again, finally, which one is not part of a water distribution system? Is it pipes? Is it tanks? Is it a dryer? Or is it pumps? Let's go ahead and see. Oh, wow. So most of you, about 121 of you, looks like you said a dryer is not part of the water distribution system. When I was thinking of this game, I was washing laundry, so it made me think about that. But that washing machine might be part of that distribution system, right? Getting that water to another source. Now our next question, let's go ahead and see. Oh, let's see how we did. We're getting our scores on the board. It looks like Fabulous Possum has our first lead. Now our second question here is, which type of engineer designs infrastructure such as roads, water systems, and bridges? So what kind of engineer did you become today? Did you become a mechanical engineer, a civil engineer, an electrical engineer, or a software engineer? Let's go ahead and share that again. So which type of engineer designs infrastructure such as roads, water systems, and bridges? Is it red triangle, a mechanical engineer? Yellow circle, a civil engineer? Blue diamond, an electrical engineer? Or green square, a software engineer? We have a couple more seconds. Try to get those answers in. Think about what kind of engineer you became today and you're going to continue to be as you improve your designs. And our answer for this looks like we're spread across the board, but most of you knew today that you became a civil engineer. Very nice, very nice. So let's go ahead and see if that changes our scoreboard. We have Diplomat Otter in the lead. Now here's our third question. When a water storage tank is elevated, what is then added to that water distribution system? So why are we elevating that water tank? Why do we want that source elevated? Are we adding pressure? Are we adding, adding gravity? Are we adding happiness? Or is it just a cool new design? So again, when water storage tanks are elevated, what is added to that water distribution system? Is it red triangle pressure, yellow circle gravity, blue diamond happiness, or green square, a cool new design? Think back to that video that we watched. Think about that demonstration when we lifted one source over another, something was being added. It looked like water was being added, but really it was some sort of force here. So let's see what our answer is. Let's reveal it. And the answer, many of you got correct, was pressure. Very nice, so many of you said pressure. Let's check out our scoreboard. We have a shift again and Golden Seals taking the lead. Here's our fourth question. 
which stream, so when you see this image here, which stream of water has the most pressure? So remember when I poured water in a cup, was it the top stream? Did that have the most pressure? Was it the middle stream? Was it the bottom stream? Or did they all have the same amount of pressure? So think about where is the highest amount of pressure? So which stream of water had the most? Was it red triangle, the top stream? Was it yellow circle, the middle stream? Blue diamond, the bottom stream? Or green square, they all had the same amount of pressure. Ooh, I'm seeing those answers come in. I'm excited to learn about this one, see how you answer. We had a demonstration, you have a visual. Where was that highest point of pressure? Was it towards the top or towards the bottom? Ah, great job. So most of you decided it was that bottom stream that had that most pressure coming out of it. That's why we made our holes towards the bottom of our storage device. Looks like we have a shift again. We have melodic snail in the lead. And for our final question for Kahoot, which is one of the first things engineers do when they're presented with a problem? So what's one of the first things that engineers do when they're presented with a problem? Do they red triangle plan? Do they yellow circle improve? Do they blue diamond create? Or do they green square ask questions? So what was that first step in our engineering design process today. How did we start out? Well, if you think to that diagram we had, we had the problem, we had the solution, and in the top we had a certain word. So what is one of the first things engineers do when they present when presented with a problem? Do they plan? Do they orange circle improve? Do they blue diamond create or green square? Do they begin to ask questions. Let's see what you thought about this civil engineers. Ah, some of you said they start to plan, but before that, remember we started to wonder and ask questions. You need to know what kind of materials you'll have, how much time, how much money, how is the program or what kind of things does a customer want? So you need to ask those questions. So let's go ahead and finish this up. It looks like we have our winner's podium with Mystery Penguin in third. In second, we have Lovely Dragon. And in first place, we have Melodic Snail. Kept that lead at the very end. So awesome job. Thank you so much for participating in that Kahoot. I just want to go back and share some information with you. If you enjoyed doing this live event, you can always find these live events that we've been recording each week on YouTube. So go to our Chula Vista Elementary School District Innovation and Instruction channel, and you will find various videos from our innovation team from the Chula Vista Elementary School District. Now I invite you to join us next week with my friend Coach Ramirez. He's going to do another challenge for you. It's called the Can You Do This Challenge? And it's going to have all things involved with health and fitness. So I bet you he's going to get your heart rates up, make your muscles strong, and challenge you and ask you, can you do this? I know he's been practicing lately to figure out ways to get more strong and build more endurance. So with that, Mr. Bruder, it looks like we are coming to an end. I want to thank all of you out there for joining us today in the live event. Please join us on our YouTube channel and join Mr. Ramirez next week for our final or for our live event before winter break.